My name is Juan de Hoyos. I'm lead engineer by Tulk Engineering, and I would like to present you briefly a very useful uh, design pattern when it comes to designing user interfaces. But let me ask a question first of all. What makes an application awesome? I'm sure if we all got out of the street and ask anyone what really makes an application awesome, I think most part of the answer we get relates to the user interface, which leads to a second, answer, a second question. What makes a user interface awesome? If we go to Wikipedia or the school books, <laughs> we can find some guidelines about how can we make a good user interface. I would say it has to be functional, easy to use, and pretty. Ah, that's it. Huh? Well, it's not so easy. I think most of, most of people here had already experience with uh, professional user interfaces. And do you agree with me that uh, we come across a lot of technical problems, especially in Qt, if we are mixing C++ and, and QML, uh, I mean, that's not, that's not a problem by itself. It's, on the contrary, it's very, it's very flexible and it gives us a lot of flexibility, but we can run into issues very easily. We have more complex, we have a low degree of encapsulation. Where can we put the common functionality in C++ and QML? Uh, how can we avoid that the widgets are too small about the C++ layer? Well, it's not so easy. This one is a classical layer architecture for an application. We can recognize a very classical design pattern. At the bottom, we have the infrastructure layer, which provides us basic functionality like data persistent networkings and whatever. On top of that, we have the business logic, which is basically where we program what the application is supposed to do. We put there the main algorithms, the main data structure. If we are doing something like model, uh, driven design here was we, where we place, uh, we, where we place the uh, domain model. And on top of that, we have the view. Hmm? The view which is basically in charge of displaying information to the customer, react to the, custom, uh, to the, to the um, user actions, keep the state, uh, maybe some dat data transformation, fancy animation, color, and so on, and so on. I mean, this part here can become, become very, very complex. So, the idea of the presentation model is just putting a layer in between. So, basically, we are putting out some information from the view and letting the view make easier and clear to maintain. And what's the information we can remove from the view and put in the model? Basically, the states, because the widgets uh, are stateless, are much easier to maintain, and data transformation that we need, or if we can share, uh, or if, if we want to share the model between different views, we can also put their common functionality. But there is also some drawbacks, some uh, disadvantage that we have to deal with. We're adding a new layer. We're adding more complexity. So we have to find a way to synchronize the information all over the way, basically between views and the business logic. Fortunately, we have Qt, and it's a very interesting uh, feature that we can profit from just to make the synchronization. I'm talking about signal slots and property binding. So the idea, the idea here is we want to have the business logic in C++, and we, we want to have the model in QML, because the view is also programmed in QML, and the model and the view are highly related. And we let signal slots and property binding, I mean, the QML engine, just to make the synchronization for us. Just a short example. This one here is a log viewer. It's a very small, sim a simple application, which just, just displays the log information from the system. We have two kinds of logs, critical one, which are the red logs, and non-critical, which are the blue ones. On top of that, we have two bottom, which is kind of a filter. We can choose if we want to display all logs or only just the critical one. And also, in the main title, we display the amount of logs that we have actually in the display list. Well, traditional way to do that uh, uh, application would be just having a QML component with a list inside, a couple of buttons, and just having the QML uh, 
view to ask the C++ business logic to get the logs and display the logs uh, in the view. For an application so simple, that's probably good enough. We don't need to complicate, the to complicate our lives. But imagine we have a more complex situation. Imagine we have more views that need to share information. So views can't end up very easy accessing the internal structure of another views. And that's not a good design. So if we apply the presentation model, it could be something like this. So we split the QML components between the views and the model. In the view one, we still have a couple of buttons. We still have a list where to place uh, the logs, but the state and the amount and the information of the logs that has to be displayed belongs to the model. So basically, we're splitting here the responsibility between what has to be displayed, which is the business of this guy here, and how has to be displayed, which is the business of this guy here. That's especially useful if we, are <clears throat> if we want to target uh, different, different uh, devices, uh, for example, with different screen resolutions. And how does it work? Well, the presentation model can any time get the logs underneath from the, the, business, the business logic, from a, a hard disk or network or whatever. Each time there is new logs, emit the signal model change. So the view knows there is new logs to display. The view can, can get a copy of the logs that has to be to display according to the filter anytime. In the other way around, each time we change the filter, the view sends a signal to presentation model, so the presentation model knows which logs has to be displayed in which situation. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you like, you can vote for me. If you didn't like, you can vote for me as well, so it's not a requisite. Thank you very much.